I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mastering Organic Synthesis. In the last video, I asked if you could figure out the synthetic route for this chemical transformation. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it independently. Just a heads up that if you enjoy these types of multi-step synthetic practice videos, I have a membership that you can join for even more exclusive content. So for this transformation, I note that I'm turning this linear alkyl chain into a cyclic ring, and I'm also doing several functional group transformations. This TBSO group is actually a silo ether that protects what is eventually going to become an alcohol when you when you introduce some sort of fluoride donor to turn this TBSO into just an alcohol. Additionally, I see that I have this carbonyl functional group known as acid chlorides, and none of those functional groups are present in my final transformation. The next thing that I see is that the number of carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, are not the number of carbons in my product, which means I also need to do some carbon-carbon bond formation. One of those types of carbon-carbon bond formation that can be done is taking place at the acid chloride position. When you add a Grignard reagent, it adds twice to form a primary alcohol, but if you use a Gilman reagent or a zinc chloride reagent, which is what we'll do for the first step, you can actually add just a single time to liberate the chloride and leave behind a ketone. So in this case, we'll use zinc chloride, which will add just a single time at that acyl position and leave everything else the same. And now all that's going to be added is this one, two, three member carbon ring carbon chain. And then from here, now that we've done this reaction, because we couldn't have done this reaction in the presence of an alcohol, we can go ahead and remove this protected group. And a common example of what to use is called TBAF, which acts as a fluoride donor, which is going to attack the silo ether, liberate that portion, and leave us behind with just the alcohol. Assuming that we're adding some sort of acid workup as well. This is going to leave us behind with that alcohol, the rest of the molecule will look the same, and we still are left with our ketone. From here, now that we've converted this into a primary alcohol, we can oxidize it into an aldehyde. And we can do that through your favorite oxidizing agent. I like to use DMP in these circumstances because it's a relatively tolerable oxidizing reagent, and that's gonna turn this portion, which was previously an alcohol, into a aldehyde and then the rest of the molecule will remain unchanged. And from here, hopefully you can see that we have a ketone and an aldehyde and we need to form a ring. And one of the common ways to do that is through what's known as an aldol condensation. By doing an aldol condensation, we can deprotonate the alpha carbon hydrogen at one of these carbonyl groups which will act as a carbon nucleophile and attack a carbonyl carbon, giving us an opportunity to close that cycle. So if we add a strong base like sodium ethoxide, for example, then we can deprotonate the alpha carbon position, allowing us to do that cyclization, which is actually how we end up closing this ring. And since it's a condensation, that's gonna give us an ketone at this position. We're gonna end up with both of our methyl groups at this position, we still have this alkyl chain, and here, since it's a condensation reaction, we actually liberate water and leave behind an, an alkene. And from here, now that we have this alpha-beta unsaturated ketone, we can do things like Michael additions. Specifically, if we use KCN, we can add a cyanide group at the four position. This would give us a one four addition located at this carbon chain, which will give us our closed cycle which still contains this ketone. It's gonna have our two methyl groups here and our ethyl group here, but now we have this nitrile group, which is CN. The next thing that we need to do is turn this ketone into an alkene with a methyl group on it. And the interconversion between alkenes and ketones you learned about in organic chemistry uses a Wittig reagent. So that Wittig reagent is actually a phosphorus ilid, which contains a double bond to carbon, and also our methyl group coming off the side. And that's how we interconvert this ketone into this alkene, which we need in our final product. So from here, everything would look the same, except for now we have our alkene, we still have our two methyl groups, our ethyl group, and this cyano group down here at this position. And from here, we're only one step away from our final product. And that is that we need to reduce this cyano group into a primary amine. And the way that we do that is through lithium aluminum hydride reduction. So lithium aluminum hydride and probably some sort of acid workup is going to allow us to generate primary amines from nitriles. So to recap, we use an organometallic reagent to turn an acid chloride into a ketone. We deprotect the silo ether using TBAF to form a primary alcohol, which gets oxidized using DMP or some other oxidizing reagent. Subsequently, we can do an aldol condensation, which allows us to form a new carbon-carbon bond and reform our cyclic ring, followed by 
a Michael addition with potassium cyanide, and subsequently we can interconvert the ketone into an alkene using a phosphorus ilid vitigri agent. Finally, we reduce the nitrile into a primary amine using lithium aluminum hydride. In the next video of this series, I'd love to see if you could figure out the multi-step synthetic route to perform this chemical transformation. I'll see you in the next one.